Welcome to another Supercoach video with me, JD. You are joining me for the round 19 review where I've had a, frankly, an awful week. An awful week. It doesn't really reflect it. Uh, still going up 26 um, ranks to being at 458 overall, but really in a week where many players or many, many of the top you know, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 had at least one of Green, Mills, or Marshall missing, if not more, or, or even Dunkley, actually, someone had already tried in that. I had none of those missing, and I still put together a very, very average score. So that is quite disappointing. We will jump into it, I guess, and go through the team real quick. But we're at that point of the year where there's not a lot to discuss. Most of us have burnt all those trades, and uh, this is actually one of those weeks where there wasn't really any big injuries, which is quite promising. All the players I kind of mentioned should be back this week, which is great. Um, I think, yeah, like Fife was uh, like rigidly shoulder, who, you know, I don't think anyone really has, at least no one at the top end anymore. So it is what it is. Uh, so defense held up really well this week. Um, Laird posted a great score. He's actually been in some pretty good form. Um, Stewart was just seagulling around half back in a... Pretty good game for the Cats, really. Uh, yeah, put together quite a nice score. Ridley was great. I didn't have May. May put together a bad one, didn't he? There you went, May. Yeah, that's the downside of May. I always knew he was going to be um, a bit inconsistent, but he's had two stinkers in a row, actually, which is a bit unfortunate for owners. Uh, Someone I would have gone, actually, had I had the money, and I, and I didn't. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Ridley was good again. You know, something that was somewhat expected. He's definitely kind of found his form and he's getting those kickouts again. Lloyd was just so sorry. Whitfield was great. Only two way runner on uh, Greater Western Sydney. I guess like Jelly sometimes is, but yeah, he deserves better than what that team dishes out. Um, with that said, they still easily took care of the Essendon team that uh, just didn't get up for the game. So, yeah, well done, Whitfield. He was, um, yeah, monumental. And then Short was okay. I expected his scoring to be better without Hooley in the team, but I think this is probably reflective of Richmond just not playing the best anymore. So, yeah, overall defence, really good. Hard to comply with any of that. Um, probably, you know, one of the, realistically one of the better defensive lineups. I don't think Ryan was any good. You obviously have Mills out. Um, so, yeah, like, back six was great this week. Great the team. Uh, in the midfield, I stuffed up captain's choices pretty badly this week. Um, Going Walsh into or like steel into Walsh, or Walsh into steel. Uh, Walsh was surprisingly average um, in that game after a month of great form where he carried Carlton, just uh, couldn't couldn't get done for another week. And uh, steel was promising, but never really got there. Some people were worried about the Hutchings tag, it wasn't, and like sure enough, it didn't really affect him. Just didn't play that well. Uh, and I think I thought they were going to be more competitive with West Coast than what they were. Uh, then of the dogs games and, uh, you know, with Oliver as well, uh, I wanted to avoid these players, which is why I did the VCC up here, just because in these top of the table matchups, it can sometimes be hard to tell who's going to stand out. And it's pretty unlikely that you all have them go big like this. As it turns out, picking any of them would have been fine. Even Gorn was good with the 125. Like you could have just gone any of these and it would have been a better captain or vice captain option, which is... Uh, like a bit of a shame, but sometimes how it happens. And had I known the game was going to be wet before I locked this in, I probably would have gone McRae just because he seemed to do really well in the rain. And then uh, the disappointing part of the midfield, Merritt. Like, you know, Parrish was getting the attention and Merritt certainly put up 71. I think he had a lot of touches too. Like, I, I don't think he... Like, he wasn't out of the game. It's just not a very good score. And Neil got tagged, didn't respond well. That's very disappointing. Like, very, very disappointing. This guy keeps ruining my seasons. I don't know how he does it. Um, last year I didn't own him while he was hot and then I traded him at the end and he cost me league finals this year um, I didn't run, didn't own him start which was good but then like this this garbage yeah not good and Spray was just alright like in a Frio team that got decimated by injuries with Darcy Walters and Fife he was kind of the only one that um, stood up and put together a, a pretty reasonable score for an M8 which is very nice um, I'd you know, much rather have someone like a titch there but it is what it is Rucks, you know, like, they're fine. Everyone's got the same rucks. Who cares? Like, Grundy, oh, man. Grundy's score, though, he had something like 25, 26 touches. They were using him in the corridor a bit, which was, like, really interesting. Um, you know, there's a lot of discussion about, like, the value of hitouts and rah, 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 rah. And then rucks are getting used predominantly as down-the-line options um, or, or forward targets or whatever. But Collingwood clearly wanted to be more aggressive than the midfield, and so that's where they put him. And it was really interesting. Like, he got a lot of it, but he butchered a lot of it, too. And... He could have had a much bigger score than this. 
then finally in the forward line, Dangerfield was great. He's in some really good form now. Uh, and, you know, carrying Geelong, I think he's going to peak well for finals. Uh, he's even found, I wouldn't say he's kicking accurate, but he's definitely a better shot goal than he has been throughout the year. The Kangaroo brothers just keep doing it again and again. The Kangaroos, another what, like, like they're averaging two hundred to eleven, but sorry, two hundred and ten between them, basically, which is great. Like it's one hundred and five each per game, which is you love that. Or these forwards, man. Like, oh, this, this is this is. By the way, this is where the team was really down. Neil, Hind, and Bolton, and these are like three of my last trade ins, and they've just been awful. So. Um, Hines killed me back to back weeks. I, what did Blakey score? Because I'm sure I should have just gone Blakey. Because what I wanted to do, wanted to go Blakey. Yeah, he outscored Hines the last two weeks, which is crazy because all he's put together is a 79 and 70. Still better than what Hines stepped up. And then um, Bolton, I traded in. I knew this week, like, because it was Bolton versus Falcons. I've obviously got the money left over with 105. And the reason why I wanted Bolton is because with Dusty out, the extra midfield time. It looked like Richard might have turned a corner and going to punch it home. And key forwards are always a little bit tricky to to go with. On top of that, uh, Hawkins has got some upcoming opponents that he hasn't scored well in either this year or historically. Like, you know, they've got Melbourne in the last round, which is just great for playing, playing leagues. Do you really want someone like a Hawkins in your team where he put up like a 60 on them earlier in the year? I'm not sure. Like, they seem to cover him off pretty well. Where Bolton um, has got a really nice run home from here. Um, like four, basically like three or four games they should win. And if he's getting more midfield time, I would expect him to be scoring a lot better. So I knew this week was going to be bad. I didn't expect it would be as bad as what it was. I was thinking like 70 or 80, Hawkins 120. I thought they'd, you know, smash Richmond. And then Bolton would catch him over the next four weeks. And yeah, this is a really bad start. I don't think that's going to... Hawkins would have to drop some stinkers and Bolton would really have to come good for that to be the case. And it's, yeah, that's, that's ugly. Like, Hind last week, he's been terrible. The last the two games I've had him. Bolton this week, that's shocking. So, yeah, in a, in a round where I have a full premium team, I had Neil, Merritt, Dale, Hind, and Bolton all go sub 75, which is just shocking. So, uh, I really let the team down. I really let the team down. So, um, at this point, just holding on uh, to my zero trades with my large bank that I can look at each week. You know, if we ever get an extra trade, at least I can uh, do some some nice trades, get some uh, luxury upgrades in. But it looks like the AFL is going to do everything they can not to, to extend the season any longer. Uh, and then finally, I guess on like vice captain captain choice this week, uh, like there are a few good matchups. So Steele and Walsh play each other. So Steele is like a good. Uh, VC option there. You have um, Dangerfield playing North, so he looks like a reasonable uh, vice captain option. Uh, what else do we have that looks good? Uh, you have Melbourne playing against Gold Coast. I forget. Isn't that the team like Oliver put it to 200 up against? And he's done against Adelaide as well. So yeah, Oliver is a very, uh, you know, after some form um he's back scoring you know pretty decently 144 139 his last two so Oliver's definitely um on the cards although Gold Coast, Gold Coast has been in, in better form so um you might actually be able to put up a fight and then finally you have the Bulldog against the Crows and, and the Crows seem to lead points in midfielders so McRae and Bond both live options there I could see myself doing something like this if I got the loophole that could let that happen uh, I don't know if I do Oh, no, yeah, Newcomb's probably not playing. So I could probably do this, which might be pretty interesting. Um, otherwise, yeah, it'll be looking at maybe like Steel Vice-Captain. Who knows? So, yeah, that's the team. Uh, obviously, no trades. There's no big injuries this week, so I don't think there's, there's much else uh, really to discuss. It's hopefully the quickest video of the year. If you have listened to this point, can you let me know if my audio is still as crap as it was last week? I know, um, yeah, with like the new room or the new house we've moved into, this room that I'm in is much larger, it's not carpeted, so that has problems with like echoing and stuff with the noise, and I have a feeling we're going to need to buy some new equipment that actually like is good rather than just a dodgy webcam. But yeah, if you made it to this point in the video, can you just let me know how good or bad the both, I guess, the audio and the video is compared to, like, earlier in the year. Um, otherwise, hit me up if you've got any questions, anything you're weighing up. Let me know how your team's going, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.